Florida Governor Ron DeSantis is reacting to that target letter sent to former President Trump in the January 6th case. In an interview with CNN, he said the country is, quote, going down the road of criminalizing political differences. I don't want to look back. I, I do not want to see him. I hope he doesn't get charged. I don't think it'll be good for the country. Uh, but at the same time, I've got to focus on looking forward, and that's what we're going to do. CBS News senior White House and political correspondent Ed O'Keefe joins us now from South Carolina, where he is covering DeSantis. Ed, good to see you. Nancy, good to see you. So Governor DeSantis, uh, he was asked about that target letter earlier today and then again by CNN. What did he have to say about Trump's actions on January 6th? You know, it was important that we ask him again because this is a, a candidate who has really tried to avoid uh, any direct criticism of the former president in this regard. He, had, at some point a few weeks ago, had suggested, well, you know, I wasn't in Washington on January 6th, so I don't really have much of an opinion on it. The answer changed today, just a little while after the former president announced that he'd received that target letter. Take a listen. I think it was shown how he was in the White House and didn't do anything while, while things were going on. Uh, he should have come out more forcefully. O of course that. But to try to criminalize that, that's a, diff that's a different issue entirely. Governor, do the former president's legal issues disqualify him to run for president? You don't think they disqualify him? No answer to that? So he went a little farther by suggesting now it was wrong, maybe not criminal activity. But notice that when we try to press him on where some of his other GOP opponents, like Asa Hutchinson, have gone, saying that it should be a disqualifying factor and something that should remove him from the race, the governor, at least so far, isn't willing to go there, Nancy. Right. That was definitely the, the gentlest criticism possible of the front runner in this race uh, and really just tells you so much about how unusual this race is that the number two has a clear shot at number one and decides not to take it. Okay. Uh, on another, another note, DeSantis, you know, the reason you're there in South Carolina is because he just filed for the South Carolina primary. Uh, what did he have to tell you about his chances in that primary and his, um, his place in this race right now? You know, and that's and that's uh, part of why we came, because in essence, it was a symbolic move by him today. He's the first Republican contender to file for the South Carolina primary before the state's former governor, Nikki Haley, who's also in this race, before the state's junior senator, Tim Scott, who's also in the race. He showed up, cut the $50,000 filing check and put himself on the ballot. And then, given the concerns about his fundraising, the cutting of his staff, the fact that he's mired there in second place and has seen his numbers slip, we inquired, are, are, you, are you in this for the long haul? Take a look. Governor, can you assure your supporters here in South Carolina you'll still be on the ballot, you'll still be on the mix with the primary <laughs> yeah, I know that's wishful thinking for you guys in your industry to think somehow that we won't, but of course we will be. It'll be um, a really important uh, uh, affair here. I don't think that you will have very many candidates by then, but, but we will certainly be one of them. Not necessarily wishful thinking. It's just merely a reflection of the fact that there have been candidates like him before who come out with a big head of steam, are able to raise a big amount of money, but then burn through that money rather quickly. Let's think of Scott Walker a few years back, Tim Pawlenty as well, two Midwestern governors who were seen as potential presidential nominees, got in the race, got a lot of great press, started hot, but then burned out because they spent through their money too quickly. Kamala Harris arguably had the same problem during the 2020 cycle on the Democratic side, never made it to the primary. So that's why we ask. Uh, but he makes the point. If you look at what we raised within just our campaign, if you look at what Donald Trump raised within just his campaign, not his super PAC, not any other associated fund, we're on par, if not a little better. Same with the president uh, on the Democratic side. His campaign raised the high tens of millions of dollars. Overall, though, with the way Democrats can raise money, they raised 72 million. So his point is, I'm doing just fine in terms of money right now, certainly compared to others in this race. And yes, they'll be here to go to distance. But what today's announcement by the former president really did do, Nancy, and maybe this is why the former president announced it the way he did this morning, around the same time that Governor DeSantis was signing that paperwork, is it once again snatched the headlines from the Florida governor and anyone else and immediately turned all the attention back on the former president, who, as we've documented, often then sees a rise in the polls when he faces legal issues. Well, a lot to talk about with the uh, with both the front runner and the number two in the Republican primary today. And Ed is on top of all of it. Ed O'Keefe, thank you.